flash games. We don't think about them a whole lot anymore. But a certain segment of viewers watching this video will absolutely remember them. There was a time when some of the most innovative games out there were flash, with new ideas and experiments in mechanics, with tools that were available to, well, let's just say it, regular people. Not people who were industry insiders or rich. Flash made it possible for anybody with the time and the willingness to learn to make a game. So what impact has that caused? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today on Game Rinks, we ask the question, how important were Flash games? In 1993, a company called Future Wave Software developed a piece of software called Smart Sketch. It was intended to be a way to draw on tablet computers that used styluses. While here in the future, obviously people like using styluses to draw on tablet computers. Back in 1993, none of it worked very good and it didn't work out. Future Wave, however, was pretty determined and ported the software to Windows and Mac. Eventually, they modified Smart Sketch and gave it a frame-by-frame -frame animation feature and rebranded it as Future Splash Animator. Through a series of acquisitions, Future Wave was acquired by Macromedia and Macromedia was eventually acquired by Adobe. This technology grew into what we know now as Adobe Flash. 94% of desktop and laptop computers have Adobe Flash on them. And at this point, that is a historic low. Over the last two decades, people have used Adobe Flash for a ton of things on the internet. And as with any other technology like that, people have used it to make games. Oh yes, the games. A lot of games throughout the 80s and early 90s gained prominence through a shareware model where you had to download a piece of the software that was either part of the game, all of the game, or even some piece of ancillary content that acted as a means to get you interested in the game, hopefully to the point that you might purchase it. Flash games were just free games that you went to on the internet and they were there. Sometimes you had to load a little bit, but not a lot. They were made with vector graphics, so the images that were contained within them took up significantly less space, and the games themselves were also usually much more simple than, say, Doom. But as you might notice whenever you play any game on the phone, some of the best games are the most simple games, and a lot of the precursors to what we have in the mobile space exist solely in the Flash game space. What you have is Steam or an App Store now back then was Newgrounds, a portal that people could upload their games to and, well, everyone had access to them then. It was it wasn't the only portal, but for a lot of people, it was the only portal, myself included. If a game wasn't on new grounds, it didn't matter, at least for the set of people I was a part of. And yes, in a lot of people's eyes, that made us the worst, but eh. What happened on new grounds was the propagation of a new type of game, the kind of game that didn't require a long install process or complex setting tweaking to make it work right. Either it worked or it didn't, and the working part was largely on the programmers. But at the same time, the programmers were operating without any budget whatsoever. They were making games in their houses on their home PCs, sometimes without any previous experience or knowledge about making games, and for no good reason other than they wanted to make a game. A lot of the games were rudimentary and simple, clicking things to proceed, puzzles, asteroids clones, tank games, simple platformers, and a whole slew of other things. Maybe even too many to name, but larger things grew out of it as well. For instance, if you know of Dan Paladin, the creator of Castle Crashers, his company, The Be Behemoth was originally him and another guy who made a Flash game called Alien Hominid. In 2002, it was a game that was really cool. It had a lot of the features that were present in the series Metal Slug, and it seemed pretty advanced for the time because of what people thought of Flash games as being. Oftentimes top-down puzzles with varying types of movements, and this was a full-blown side-scrolling shooter, and it played great. In fact, so great that the two original designers of the game enlisted a few other people to create the game on a much larger scale, and they were able to secure a publishing deal for the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube, turning them into a full-blown company. It did very well, too, because they're still developing games to this day. They called the Flash game a prototype and were able to make deals that allowed them to develop something much bigger. This is a model that has been followed more than a few times since, and while it's definitely not the first one to do it, it's one of the more prominent examples. Another very 
very prominent example happened in 2008 when a game on Newgrounds again called Meat Boy got a whole lot of attention. The original Meat Boy took about three weeks to make, and the two gentlemen that made it worked remotely with each other, creating that original Flash game, which became so huge that both Nintendo and Microsoft requested that they make games for their download services. The two programmers were originally working on a different title, and they pitched both that as well as sequels to previous Flash games they had made when they realized that the best thing for them to do would be to make an upgraded version of the game that sort of brought them success. We all know the success story of Super Meat Boy and we all have it installed on something, so I don't need to get into it. The model, though, is really what I'm wanting to talk about here. The creation of something small that a lot of people really, really love to the point that they were excited about it, talked about it, played it all the time, posted on the internet about it repeatedly to the point where somebody noticed it and said, you know what, that should be something bigger, and invested a little money into it, probably wouldn't have happened if Flash games weren't a thing. Flash games opened the floodgates. They changed everything in so many ways, and although, like I said, they are not massively complex games, if you've ever played Happy Wheels, for instance, you know that they can be some of the more fun games. And let's be honest, it doesn't even matter if they work right. Again, with Happy Wheels, some of the best stuff came from the game acting like you didn't want it to. In the last five or so years, no, it certainly hasn't been populated with a lot of great Flash games. People have kind of moved on to using other engines because, well, let's just say it, everything has a lot more capabilities than Flash and has gotten just about as easy to develop. Action Script isn't necessarily the easiest programming language to exist anymore. There's a lot of other programming languages that are just as simple, and although there's more to them, they are aren't really conceptually that different, like Unity's scripting language. But the thing that's most important to recognize here is that this all started because different tools were opened up to more people who really wanted to create art in a certain medium that they weren't able to before. Yeah, a lot of Flash games were really dumb, but a lot of them were really innovative too. And in a way, doors were open that would have never been open unless somebody said, you know what, we need to make it so that people can make games and do this. They don't have have to be the most complex games ever, they just have to be able to do it, and creative people will figure out a way to make great stuff. And that's what happened. And I'll say one other thing. When the floodgates are opened, it's always eventually tempered in some way. Indie games went through a big, wonderful stage of development after the initial Flash game craze. That time period was amazing. Anybody could get in. All they had to do was be good at it, be creative, understand that people want something different. Not necessarily something completely out there that you can't understand, but they want somebody's perspective combined with their knowledge of game design. And that was all that was needed during that boom. But I will say there has been kind of a dam. When we had the democratization of media happen, it included video games, and what's happened post that democratization has affected video games as well. To talk about YouTube, it opened up media to all people, and now it's kind of getting overrun by corporations. It's kind of hard to say that hasn't happened with indie games. It has. And I don't know whether that requires a Flash game revival, whether you should get up purchase the latest version of Adobe Flash and start tossing stuff up on new grounds now, or if we need to reevaluate the model entirely. I would love it if you started to be more creative, though. I am flat out saying that. Whether it leads to a revolution in video games or it doesn't, it would be really good for you to try. Flash did lead to a revolution. It led to the opening of gaming. Could it lead to a reopening? I don't know, but I definitely support any effort to shun the control of faceless boards of people making decisions by consensus and making art more and more bland. Shockwave Flash, whether it was the intention or not, was the antithesis of that. And that's exactly why Flash games were super important. What were your favorite Flash games? Let's talk about that in the comments. If you've never actually played one, maybe go over to Newgrounds, check a few out, and report back with your findings. But if you like this video, please click like, of course. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a subscription, obviously. And we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.